shorts came in. <laughs> Dude's got some issues. Hey, welcome back to the workshop. Glad you could join us again. This is part three now of our tube preamp pedal build. I'm extra excited today because the parts came in. Now in the last video we got most of the work done on the chassis. We still have to knock out holes for the IEC socket, power switch, input jack, and output jack. The IEC socket and the power switch both have a narrow flange around the mounting surface that will cover up some of the gaps from uh, the holes that we cut. They're pretty narrow though, so we have to be careful that, that we get it at least close so that we don't have any gaps showing. I'm going to be marking the holes with some blue painter's tape, then I'll drill out the corners with an eighth inch drill bit and cut the sides with a rotary tool and a cutoff wheel. I might not be able to use the cutoff wheel for the power switch because it's so small, so I might have to improvise. We'll see how it goes. IEC socket and you can see it's it's a pretty good fit there's a little bit of wiggle room there but not too bad and I've got the power switch too this was a little bit more difficult um, just because this is such a, a small such a short side here I was afraid that I was going to start cutting into the, uh, the top of the aluminum here where I don't want any cuts but um, I, I was able to cut deep enough that I could just poke it out with my finger I cleaned up both of those with a deburring tool. I've decided not to drill a hole for the input and output jack yet. Uh, I want to wait until I actually get the input board assembled and then do a test fit in there, make sure that I, I don't end up having them too close together. The chassis is ready for paint. Now I'm going to mount the power transformer before I paint it. Unfortunately, there's no way to mount the power transformer without uh, screws or, or rivets showing through the top. In fact, the transformer is the exact height to fit inside here. There's, I mean, it's, it's flush with this top surface here. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't do another mounting plate like I did with, with the other part here. Um, so I want to mount that first so that I can paint over the rivets and at least then the rivets will be the same color as the enclosure. I'll go ahead and do the first coat of paint and while that's drying, I can get started on some soldering.
gonna make sure this is perfectly clean before I paint, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of brake cleaner. Okay, so now the first coat of paint is drying. I said I was going to mount the power transformer before I painted it, and then I, of course I forgot to do that. So after the first coat is dry, I'll mount the transformer with some rivets and then do the second coat. Now that I've seen the white, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I may end up changing the color, I don't know. Anyway, we have a few auxiliary circuit boards that we have to assemble before we can start working on the main circuit. The input board that has our MOSFET boost stage and input buffer. We need our AC board, and that'll have our mains fuse and thermistor. We need our output board that has the output jack and the output buffer. We need our power supply with all the filter capacitors. We need our switching board that's going to handle all of the switching, channel switching, boost on and off, all that other stuff. So that's what we're going to work on first. Now originally I was going to use a combination of relays and transistor switches. I've decided against the relays because with the current demands of those relays, it, it would have pushed the power transformer right to the ragged edge of what it could safely supply. And we really don't gain anything by using relays in this case, except for the ability to possibly uh, implement MIDI switching down the road. This is already going to be a long enough project as it is. I'd like to have this done before my next birthday, so no MIDI switching. We're just going to use uh, transistor switching and switching between the rhythm channel and lead channel is going to use one of these triple pole double throw switches. One pole is going to switch between the rhythm signal and lead signal. One pole will switch between the rhythm and lead volume control. And then the third one will switch between a series of transistor switches. So this one switch is going to do everything that those two relays would have done and it will consume a lot less power. So here's the basic idea of the switching circuit that we're going to be using for this design. In this pedal, most of the components that we need to switch in and out are just being shunted to ground, like a cathode bypass capacitor. So we're able to take advantage of this very simple switching technique. And all that we're doing here is we're turning on and off a transistor. In this case, we're using a 2N5088 because I've got a whole bunch of them. Now, if I've done the math correctly, the on resistance of a 2N5088 is about 20 ohms, not high enough to cause any problems. When we pull the base of our transistor high by applying our 6 volts here, the current is allowed to flow through the transistor, connecting our cathode bypass capacitor to ground. This additional 100K resistor here, that's just providing a little extra stability so that the transistor is either fully on or fully off. I've done a mock-up of the switching circuit here on the breadboard just to make sure that everything works the way it should and all these uh, various switches play together nicely. Here's our channel switch. This is going to be switching between the rhythm, which is yellow, and lead, which is blue. This switch is going to be our boost function. So here's the boost on and off on our lead channel and the same thing on our rhythm channel. And then this is our bypass switch right here. And this red light here, that's just representative of the uh, portion of the circuit that will be grounded out when we're bypassing this pedal.
this little 5 watt amp that I've been working on for a while, um, and it's definitely still a work in progress. Um, I, I must have a bad connection somewhere, because this thing, it, it just, depending on its mood, it'll hum like crazy right now. It's pretty buzzy, but I can play it again tomorrow and it'll be totally different. So, you know, I've been inside this thing so many times, changing out components, it doesn't surprise me. Once I get everything set the way I want it, I'll probably just rebuild the entire thing just to make sure that uh, I don't have any bad joints in there. Um, but I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, here, I'll just play a little bit for you. Got a lot of gain if you want it to. It's, we're gonna, it's gonna hum like crazy, but I'm gonna turn the gain up here so you can hear it. I know that's probably overdriving the camera mic, but anyway, I just thought you might get a kick out of that. I think it's pretty cool. I've been having fun with this, and uh, hopefully someday it'll be an amp worth keeping. Okay, so we got our switching board done. I wouldn't put a second coat of paint on the chassis. Now let's get working on the input board. Okay, got to get started on this input board. I'm a little nervous about this, because this is going to be a really tight fit. I've only got about an inch and a half from the front of the uh, of the jack to where the uh, where this is going to be mounted, so that's uh, that's not a lot of room to work with. Got to give it a shot though. Well, I did not get very far with this input board. I, I've just been staring at this thing for ten minutes trying to figure out how I'm going to fit everything on here. I think what I'm going to have to do is draw this out at home. And, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to erase a pencil line than undo a solder joint. So I'll have to actually plan this out uh, instead of just, you know, doing it off the top of my head. And hopefully we can fit it all on here. That's about how much room I've got to work with. And I've got to fit a, an input buffer and the MOSFET boost stage on there. So we'll have to see. So that's it for today's video. Be sure to check out all our pedals at www.timkelectronics.com. We've got some great sounding pedals over there, great build quality too. You can also check out all the demo videos right here on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. Like it if you like it, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.